Hey gearheads and welcome to Grouse Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker. That's me. And we are in a fancy Ford Escape. We are in the 2024 Lincoln Corsair, a vehicle that was introduced in the 2020 model year, updated for 2023, carries over largely unchanged here for 2024. It's very luxurious as we are getting massaged up here in the front seats. And in this video, We'll tell you how it fits our growing family of three. Stay tuned. It is springtime here in East Texas, and you know what that means? The pollening is happening. Yes, my car has been sitting outside for over a week, and you can see it is no longer black. It is a nice shade of pollen, and yeah, not very clean. And then looking over here at this Kia EV6, this has just been out for one night and we already have a nice coat of pollen all over the top of this one, which leads very nicely into this week's video sponsor. Thanks to our friends at carcover.com, we were able to get a custom perfect fit car cover for my 2013 Chevy Cruze. They know it's important to keep your car protected. And what they sent me was their Gold Shield 5L car cover, which beats all its competitors for many reasons. It resists all types of extreme weather conditions, such as snow, and is 100% waterproof and water resistant. This is the ultimate car care cover for storing your vehicle and protecting it while outside. The soft fleece lining is sure to protect your vehicle's paint and finish while it is underneath. And this car cover was so simple to install, I was able to do it myself for the very first time in under 15 minutes. It comes with a couple clips for the front and the back and a lockable cable to secure it across the middle. So this car cover is not going anywhere and it will help me keep all that pollen out here in the springtime in East Texas. Huge thanks to carcover.com for providing us with this Gold Shield 5L cover for my Chevy Cruze. You can get one for yourself. Simply follow the link down in the description below and enter promo code GT Garage Talk in the coupon field at checkout for a discount off your first order. All right, Holly, this is another one of those scenarios where I do believe you have more time behind the wheel. more and more common. Yeah, you've got more time behind the wheel than I do. Am I the car reviewer or you? Uh, we both are. <laughs> we both are. So that begs the question, what are your initial thoughts on this 2024 Lincoln Corsair? Corsair. Um, well, as my back is getting massaged, <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> Not swaying your thoughts or uh, no, in no, no, not at all. Well, let's start on the outside and work our way in. Okay, thoughts on the color first and foremost. Of course, I love the color of Whisper this one. Whisper blue, I believe. Whisper blue. It's a different color than you see on the road. Then it's also got like some black accent and some. And it's a metallic flake, so it's unlike your car, which isn't metallic and is a similar hue. Hue. This one's metallic, so it really stands out. Yes it does as well as the design of um especially the front mm -hmm. is um different than anything else i think is on the road maybe it's I, i'm glad you bring that up because i'm gonna we'll I, transition right i here. really like it it's reminiscent uh, to me of maybe like a classic style with a modern twist okay or maybe some of the uh like a Rolls Royce or something like that up front. Mm -hmm. It's very, it, it speaks to me like old money. Okay. But in a modern style twist. Uh, and I will tell you in the pickup line at school, every single teacher had something nice to say about the car. It, it caught a lot of eyes. Interesting. Cool. And I agree, I liked it a lot. And then I told them it had massaging seats and they were sold. Yeah. So. <laughs> To that end, it's very interesting that you bring up the style of this because this vehicle was introduced in 2020, was redesigned for 2023. I do believe this is the first Lincoln to get the new design language on the outside. We had the Aviator, had a slightly different look, different grill, but this one definitely is more classy. It's got a bigger, bolder grill. And you know, do you know what this is called? No. The Lincoln Star. Okay. So it's got like a repeating Lincoln Star silhouettes mm -hmm. in the grill it's a really cool 
nice chrome classy look. We've got the floating roof design uh, with the black pillars to make it look like. What are your thoughts of the back, back in the back? I like it. Uh, the hatch actually kind of wraps it around mm -hmm. the corners, which is not something you typically see in anything without the Audi rings on the front and rear. Yeah. Uh, it has a very Audi-like rear end design uh, with very slim tail lights, very, very classy look. It is classy. This is a classy looking car. I like it. Yep. Okay. It, it looks like you should have a chauffeur. <laughs> oh. All right. Moving inside. Thoughts in here? Inside, I really like it as well. Um, I wish that this um, texture right here was actually like textured. Instead of imitation? It just, <laughs> yeah, it's an imitation texture there. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it kind of looks like it should be metal, but it's not metal. Yeah, it does give more of a chintz factor. Chintzy. A factor. little bit, but I do yeah. like this part of the dash that's mm. very nice and Got a fake Leather. vent here in front of me, but a very continuous look all the way across. I don't love mm. the black right here, especially like these are your buttons that yeah. you're pressing. And this is all one piece. I was wondering if you would catch on to that. I don't love that. that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, just one big button, but it knows where you're pushing. Mercedes Benz does that in uh, yeah, some it's of their interesting. products. But I do <laughs> on that um, panel like that the automatic start stop button is right there where you don't have to search for it because yep. that is terrible on yep. this car yeah um and then and then you've Spoiler. got your cameras right there yep camera button mm -hmm. which we're going too fast for it to actually work but uh, as we pull up to the stoplight uh we can talk about the cameras just because they are actually like I don't know if surprising is the right word but surprisingly good um <laughs> yeah i don't think surprising is the right word to a there we go but very clear, very crisp, lots mm -hmm. of different angles uh, that you can see, very wide angle. You can see out behind yeah. us, all around us. You can zoom in, lots of... Um, I especially like it because our driveway, as we've talked about many times, is very steep. Mm -hmm. And so I like being able to have the cameras up front mm -hmm. when I'm going cresting around. Cresting the hill. <laughs> cresting the hill. <laughs> so I can make sure that I'm not gonna hit our sides or anything like that. Yep. And then you've got like this 13 plus inch the screen, the screen display, the screen, the, the screen. screen up here, very, very clear and crisp again with those okay. cameras and with our wireless Apple CarPlay and Android mm -hmm. Auto. What are your thoughts to all the HVAC being integrated to the touchscreen? So the, this, is, this has been a little bit of a challenge for okay. me. Um, I feel like it's a lot of tech. It is. And it I, it took forever for me to set up my phone oh, okay. and uh, to get it working. Now, once I did get it all set up and stuff like that, but there were a lot of buttons to press. There was a lot of, it was a lot of tech. Yeah. And I am tech challenged anyways. So, you know, if it, you ha probably have no trouble, and whatever. But it's it, messed up a couple times. It was a me. little, it was a little much for me. And so then the, with having all this right here, it's a little much. I will say, I do like, unlike your car, uh, when you put it in reverse and all this is cameras, mm -hmm. this stays here. So that is a nice touch. When you're gonna put everything on the screen, I like that it doesn't get overridden with camera displays and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that is a nice touch. Mm -hmm. While we're up here, while we're talking about putting it in reverse and such, thoughts on the buttons? I like the buttons just the fine. Piano those keys. Yeah, they don't bother me at all. What about the engine start button? <laughs> it was, it's difficult to find at first, but yeah. no, I got used to it after that. Yeah, and then you alluded to this being gloss black plastic, where you're going to be touching, and it's exactly. a shelf, so it's collecting dust. Yes. Yeah. But down here, yeah, we've got a texture. Stop with the gloss black. What yeah. the heck? Uh, mm -hmm. So down here, no gloss black, but we have this textured material. Mm -hmm. This would have been better up here, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so. But we've alluded to it, but it does have massaging mm -hmm. seats. It's got a nice little button next to the three-person. Mm -hmm. Which you need a three-person memory because this has 24-way perfect position seats. Yes. That take that... forever to get perfectly crafted, but when you do, it's you want it so to stay. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's a lot of customizations for your seat, which is really nice. I even like used the, I don't know, seat the, depth. Uh, 
<laughs> thigh <laughs> support. The thigh support, um, which is really nice. But I do f wish the seats were a little wider. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I just have a big badonkadonk, but <laughs> I do wish they were a little, uh, a teensy bit wider. Yeah. They do hug you. That's for sure. Yeah. But the massage seats, they do work well. Some of all, some massage seats are just like me, a breath. Yeah. Of massage, but this is this pretty good for yeah. A car. Uh, well, I guess this is a good transition. We're talking about comfort of it. Uh, we are turning on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas, right next to the Ford equivalent of this vehicle. Interestingly enough, turning on to the brick streets, we can do Tucker's wobbly head test. Tucker, how's your head back there? Good. Good. Holly, how's yours? Good. Yeah. So this does not have the adaptive suspension, which you can get, but uh, for a entry-level luxury vehicle, that was the worst bump on the road. You, you heard it more you than heard you heard it, but you can't feel it um, at all. Rides fairly well. We're on 20-inch wheels and tires. A standard R19 on this trim. Um, getting a little reverb vibration stuff going on back there on these brick streets but other than that rides well pretty calm well. quiet mm -hmm. bumpy. I will say the massage seat on this side is kind of noisy uh, that is the ventilated seat nope oh okay it, the massage seat is <laughs> I hear my ventilation <laughs> breathing over my shoulders I I say that because <laughs> um, I noticed it when I did not have the ventilated okay. seat on. okay so. While we're talking to Tucker back there with his wobbly head, uh, Tucker, how's your space back there? Good. Yeah. We actually have a sliding 60-40 split bench folding rear seat back there, uh, which I guess is now a good time to talk about rear cargo after I install his child safety seat back there. Putting Tucker's child safety seat in the back of the 2024 Lincoln Corsair is fairly easy. Lincoln really makes the lower latches very uh, exposed and easy to get to. These leather seats do seem like they will hold up uh, to the seat being here in place. And I like that they are 60-40 split with the 40% being here on the passenger side. So that is a very nice touch. They also recline fairly well as well. So all of that works very nicely. Nice panoramic roof, vents on the back of the center console, heated outboard seats, although neither of those things really apply too much to Tucker. Well, especially when he was rearward facing, really prefer ceiling mounted vents. And speaking of when he was rearward facing, we are going to bring his Graco Extendafit car seat into place here. This is the same one he used when he was rearward facing. And you can see it's a little bit of a tight fit back here in the back. So we'll give it just a little space there. Wow. I actually had to put the front seat all the way up. What does that mean for front seat passenger space? I mean, it's okay. My knees are fine, but you're definitely feeling the fact that this is a small car for sure. That is a tight front seat uh, with this back here in the back, but he's outgrown that. So flip it around. Drop the top tether back behind. Worry about that in a moment. As I mentioned, the lower latch points are quite exposed. And as long as you go at them from the correct angle direction, very easy to latch into. The height of the vehicle is very good for installing, tightening the latches. Now, Let's go around to the back, see what it's like to put that top tether in, talk a little storage. Coming up to the back of the Corsair, let's see, we do have a kick to open. Where is it? There it is, under the passenger side uh, parking sensor. You can see we've got a decent amount of space back here. Top tethers all the way across, even though we don't have lower latch points all the way across, just on the outboard seats. And then putting the tether in and tightening it up. Fairly easy, probably gonna be a two-handed process. You can see it's gonna possibly do some damage to the top of the seat here. It is firm, but there's just a lot of extra padding 
uh, and material here, so it may do some long-term damage leaving this seat in long-term, but it's not pinching the seat or anything. So I guess that really scores as a pass. And it is actually a pretty far reach for such a small vehicle. It feels like they put all the extra room in the Corsair back here behind the seats versus for that second row. It is a very roomy, very spacious. We do have some power releases here for the rear seat. So if we needed more space, we could fold those down very nicely. We have 12 volt power back here. And we do have some underfloor storage with the spare tire. Go ahead and lift this up a little bit. It is a temporary 155 uh, 70 uh, D17 O17. Can't really tell what that is. Uh, but yes, it is a temporary spare. And we have a little bit of storage around it that is also felt lined. So you're not going to get a lot of rattles back here uh, in the back. So that is a very nice touch. You can see the hatch opens up fairly nice and wide. I'm 510. Plenty of room underneath it. That is where they put the power close button. And another thing that is very interesting, you can see the taillights went with the hatch. So when the hatch is open because of DOT regulations, these become the taillights. And then when it closes back, you'll see them switch uh, across. But that's a unique touch. And you can also close it by kicking underneath the parking sensor right there. Decent, not great storage back there, or uh, room back there. Good storage back in the way back, but a little tight in the second row. Usable, but a little tight. If you wanted the next step up to this, we actually just drove by one. You would get the Nautilus, which just got updated for 2025. Pillar to pillar screens and all kinds of fun yeah. stuff in that one. Borrowing heavily from the exterior design of this Lincoln Corsair. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Drivability. Uh, you said the start-stop was terrible. It's What's terrible. it like driving <laughs> otherwise? I've really enjoyed driving this car. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Visibility? How's visibility? Visibility is good. I yeah. wonder if your one complaint is my one complaint. Do you have a complaint on visibility? No? Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like the back window is so tiny. It is kind of small. And I could never quite adjust the rear view just right um so um yep. how's the steering steering's good not too heavy not steering too light steering wheel is a interesting texture yeah not too heavy not too light it's padded um it is padded yeah it's not a bad texture it's just like a different texture yeah. little it's coarse kind of, leather yeah maybe uh, what and are your thoughts it's to, two-toned yeah what are your oh. thoughts with the joysticks I haven't played with them at all. Figured as much. <laughs> but depending on what you have selected, different things light up on the steering wheel. I don't know. I feel like the intended buyer of this, I know they're trying to go younger, but I feel like the intended buyer of this, you were complaining about the tech here. I feel like the joysticks and the buttons and the things on it's the steering wheel could be a little much for the typical Lincoln buyer. Are you saying an old? It's a truck. No. Oh. I'm saying the typical Lincoln buyer. Well, we haven't talked about the head-up display, which is really nice mm -hmm, in this mm -hmm. car. It has your gas range yep. on it, which I haven't seen in any other car. Um, and your time, temperature. Posted speed. speed. Posted speed. The speed you're going. Yep, yep. So it's very nice. Does it work with your map, too? Yes. If you use awesome. Apple CarPlay or the built-in navigation, it'll put it up there as well so that is very nice, nice. Uh, very clear crisp easy to read you had to adjust it with the joystick over here which isn't my favorite but whatever then we've got these nice panoramic glass roof up mm -hmm. above us with this huge opening panel above us and tucker a little bit uh that's got tons of light coming in letting light into us uh which helps with the darker interior we've got dark gray black I don't know if dark gray is my favorite, but I each like their it. own. I like it. But, um, any other thoughts? Driving the impressions? Green would be nice. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking. Any other thoughts? Driving uh, experiences, power? Uh, and that power is good. Yeah. Everything with driving it, I've really enjoyed driving yeah. it. I yeah. haven't had any issues. I think your mom even liked it. Yes. Uh, she, was she getting a massage too? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. 
Yes, baby. This has got a Reve a Revel? Revel? I don't know. 14 speakers, Revel. premium sound system in it, which plays Tucker's dinosaur songs quite well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't talked fuel economy. We're yeah, getting fuel a, economy. a meh 15.4. It's rated 21 city, 28 highway, 24 combined. Huge window sticker on this one, mm. which isn't great, but I'm going to go ahead and decrease that. Uh, we're actually seeing more over the time that we've had it, less over me reviewing it today and mm -hmm. running the engine to keep it cool. 24.7, which is uh, definitely more in line. So, fairly close to what we're getting here when you take out me sitting and letting it idle. Any other thoughts? Nope. Before we talk, I'm giant interested to know sticker. what the time, what the cost is. All right. So, I will note this is the way Lincoln does it. They have three different trims. Okay. This is the middle trim, okay. and then each trim has like sub trims. Oh boy. This is the top sub trim. So this is the Reserve Three. The Reserve Three. Yes. Okay. Well, that changes everything. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going with 52. Higher? Oh boy. Um, 67. No. Lower, Higher? Lower. Oh, okay. 62. Essentially, 61,395 as okay. this one sits. Well, it does have the massage seat. Which is a tough pill for me to swallow in this <laughs> size class. A compact crossover. Yeah. It's a little tight on the interior for us. Uh, this has $14,585 worth of options on it. Mm. So it starts at $45,400 okay. and goes up to the nearly $62,000 of this particular model. Yeah. So it's a little on the price side, but it's very comfortable. It's very comfortable. And you like and the you style and design. Seats and, and the style seats. and design. So there's some appeal. Probably not going to be in our driveway, but if it showed up, you wouldn't. I wouldn't be sad. The for same as you, the size issue on the inside is a little bit of a mm -hmm. issue for me in that price range. Yeah, you were complaining when we bought our Jeep Cherokee that it yeah. was a little too small for us. This is in the same size family, yeah. same problem. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. maybe a Nautilus, Lincoln. Could you send us a Nautilus, please? <laughs> If you want to see that when it happens, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Follow Holly on uh, social media at Female Consumer on Facebook and Instagram. Follow All Things GT Garage Talk at GT Garage Talk. Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, Threads, YouTube at GT Garage Talk. Or you can go to GTGarageTalk.com. Anything else from you back there, Tucker? Yeah. On that note, until next time, Gearheads. Bye. Bye. Well, guys, I think we can cancel the clapping in this one because when I hurt finger, well... No. Cancel the what? The clapping in this one because my finger's still... Is your finger still hurting? Yeah. What about snapping? Can you snap with your other hand? No, I haven't learned how to snap yet. Yeah, it's hard with your left hand, huh? Even I can't do it. Even I can't snap with Yeah, I do it with your middle finger and your thumb. Try try with your left hand. Mm -hmm. Close. You push them, push them together real tight. Your middle finger, middle finger, and your thumb. And then move your thumb up. It won't work. Yep, you just got practice. Remember, I used to not know how to do it. And then I practiced, and now I do. We'll tell you how it fits our growing family of three. Does that sound like our family is growing like more people? Or yeah. growing like he's, <laughs> he's growing? Hey, let's give them something to talk about. The let's only, give them something. The only people who'd really care are people that... Know us? Know us. That's the one. So you're saying... Like every, every...